We have been monitoring these bank hearings in Washington. It's our top story today. CEOs from the biggest U.S. banks facing tough questions from lawmakers on Capitol Hill. The House Financial Services Committee is conducting a review of big banks 10 years after the financial crisis. Um, so let's talk about it here. Um, we are... I don't know, maybe a third of the way through the, the various members of the committee now in asking questions. Um, and basically, uh, some of the various members of Congress have been highlighting things like the gap between a bank CEO pay and employee pay, which is wide at banks, it's wide at, at many uh, U.S. corporations. Of course, there was an interesting um, back and forth with the Bank of America CEO, uh, Brian Moynihan, where he essentially said, this is sort of aspirational. He was asked. He also had, yeah, had Gregory Meeks, the yes. representative from New York, who, by the way, will be a guest on the program in an hour. He actually talked about the banks have recovered, but average people haven't. I mean, do you think the average American thinks they've recovered from the This oh, is Scott Gamm, by the way, <laughs> of Value Finance <laughs> and Tenda Heike of Pise of Lending Trio is yeah. with us as well. Uh, well, first of all, when it comes to income inequality, that was largely driven by the Fed, the tri you know, trillions of dollars in bond stimulus since the financial crisis. The rich got richer because the rich own stocks. The average Joe doesn't necessarily have exposure to the stock market. Where is the average Joe investing? In their savings account. And the Fed stimulus caused savings rates to go to near zero. So that's really the cause of any income inequality that we're seeing over the past couple of years. And the other thing I'll say is that um, they also impacted the housing market. So because you couldn't get yield in some of the safer assets, you had private equity firms buying up real estate. So that's another kind of way that the middle class kind of got hurt from this. All right, we want to go to Brian Chung now. He's in Washington monitoring the hearing. So, Brian, uh, what are some of your highlights so far? <laughs> Brian, Hi there, Julie. Uh, I'm not sure if I uh, can hear you anymore, but um, I do want to say that uh, Maxine Waters did indeed say that she wants to rein in lawbreaking at these companies. Uh, Waters did say, quote, I'm concerned that several of the, these institutions are too big to manage their operations. And uh, McHenry, who is the ranking member, again, representing the Republican side of the committee, said that, quote, this is a hearing in search of a headline. He sees no reason to bring the CEOs to the Hill when economic times are good. But there was a number of exchange in terms of the actual businesses that these companies are engaging with. They talked, for example, about anti-money laundering. There was some questions to Citigroup about their investigations over whether or not they're actually engaged with any sort of business dealings with uh, questionable behavior uh, in clients in Russia, for example. Maxine Waters referencing Deutsche Bank, for example. A number of other things that they talked about. They talked about, for example, uh, whether or not they thought the regulatory regime is too tight. A lot of uh, uh, bankers on uh, on Wall Street have argued that the post crisis Dodd Frank regulations actually were too restrictive on the companies and argued that they haven't been able to lend as freely into the economy. Jamie Dimon, for example, reiterating a number of points that he actually issued in his annual letter, saying that he uh, sees a, a case for excessive regulation and that the uh, lawmakers on Capitol Hill should actually try to pare back some of those policies. Again, right now the uh, hearing is on current recess, but we are expecting to hear from the likes of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for example, Rashida Tlaib, a number of high-profile Democrats on this Democratic-led committee that could get uh, some fiery attention as this hearing does continue as well. All right, thanks, Brian Chung, uh, with us from Washington. And just to reiterate, Yahoo Finance's Scott Gam is with us, as is Tendai Kapfize, Lending Tree's chief financial economist. Tendai, I want to bring you into yeah. this. Um, Patrick McHenry, who is on the panel, he's a North Carolina Republican, said this is a hearing in search of a headline. Um, what do you think still needs to be, I mean, what do you think is uh, the purpose of this hearing and what should be the purpose of the hearing? Uh, oh my goodness, that's really kind of a, a shocking thing to hear uh, a member of Congress say. Um, this, you know, you don't really know where to begin if you, you know, from since the financial crisis, for example, what the Fed did in terms of lowering rates and kind of flooding the banks with this capital, what was supposed to happen was that banks were supposed to take that capital and maybe lend it out to members of the middle class. Um, we had a lot of things like the modifications, et cetera, that didn't really go quite as planned. Uh, so I think, and the thing is, the banks are in a bit of a catch-22. Uh, right now, okay. if you look at loan quality, it's at the highest that it's been in decades, which means that they haven't been lending aggressively, but part of it is because people are not in a position to borrow because the incomes have been going. Let, let's bring in also, we've got Richard Hunt. He is the Consumer Bank Association CEO and president. And let's start with that question that Julie was just asking, uh, that was asked at the hearing. Is this a hearing in search of a headline, or are there legitimate issues 10 years after the financial collapse and bailout of the big banks that we as consumers need to be asking and paying attention to? 
Well, a very good morning to everyone. I think you hit the nail on the head. The banking industry is totally different than it was 10 years ago. I consider it a total makeover. Our capital ratios were much better. Liquidity ratios much better. Our stress testing. Think of any other industry in this country where you have to go through a stress test issued by the federal government with the results known to everyone. I actually think that's one of the best results of Dodd-Frank is the annual stress testing for everyone. So I think this is a great opportunity for the CEOs to appear before the public and stress how much different the banking industry is versus 10 years ago. We're very positive about the future of banking. In fact, Yelena McWilliams of the FDIC said at our CBA Live conference last week, the banking industry is very, very strong. Zero bank failures last year, less banks on the troubled watch list than in the history of the FDIC. Hi there, Richard. Scott Gam here. I wanted to yes, ask Scott. you about the shadow banking system because that's not really getting enough attention. I mean, you've got shops like, you know, Rocket Mortgage doing a lot of lending out there. I guess how does that fit into the overall banking picture? And what do you think uh, folks are going to say on Capitol Hill about shadow banking? Will that come up today? Yeah, yeah that is a great question. 50% of all mortgages are now done by non-bank industries. Also, 40% of all consumer lending is done by non-banking entities, and we welcome competition throughout the board. The problem is, do they have the same safety and soundness and credit underwriting as banks? Everybody can prosper in an uptown of the economy, but what about the downturn of the economy? That's where I think consumers can be harmed. The CFPB has a mission to level the playing field between banks and non-banks. We certainly hope they do that. Richard, I am curious, and you can look at this two ways. Investors are looking at bank stocks right now, which are trading up, or you can look at it from the point of a consumer who's trying to get a mortgage or who might feel they never got uh, bailed out the way the banks did. For consumers, what's the experience they're having? Because it seems that the um, questions from the Democrats and the progressives are keyed into the anger that a lot of the voting public and consumers have towards banks. Well, that was 10 years ago, and you may have seen the announcement by Bank of America where they've increased their minimum wage to $20. We're investing some half a trillion dollars back to communities to help them grow. Look at what City and what Chase has done with the cities of Detroit and then Southern LA as well. So we're trying to help consumers get back on their feet. The economy is very strong right now. And the, the commentator earlier made a great point. Our underwriting standards are tighter. People are not as qualified as they once were to receive a loan. So there's a mixed bag trying to help the consumer get that home, go to college, get that car. But our banks serve one out of every three consumers in this country. We have more than enough money to lend. We're just trying to make sure this economy is healthy for the very long term. Richard Hunt, Consumer Bank Association CEO and President, thank you for joining us on The Move. No, thank you.